Hello, my name is Sachin Vaidya and I am a Database Specialist Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. Today, we are going to talk about Oracle Database Migration Strategies to migrate Oracle Databases from on-premises to Amazon Cloud. The Oracle Databases on customer premises may be running as a single instance database or a multi-tenant database or as a rack database and they may be migrating over to the Amazon Cloud where they can be hosted in Amazon RDS Oracle service or can be run as an Oracle database running on Amazon EC2 servers. Our agenda today is to determine whether to move database uh, to RDS Oracle or to Oracle EC2 based on features, migration strategies based on the downtimes, options and tools available for migration, how to perform cross-platform migration, migration of a large number of databases in case of data center migration, and then we will look at Amazon database migration service. Amazon Relational Database Service provides services or APIs to manage databases that are run on six popular database engine as given below and it makes it easy to administer or provision these databases and then makes them secure and compliant by, uh, by encrypting data at rest and in transit and makes them highly available and durable by using multi-easy configuration and they, they can be highly performant and scalable for memory, CPU and storage to make them durable to use for any application. They can be in Amazon Aurora, MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle. There are links given below which will show you the best practices regarding RDS and the licensing required to run databases in RDS service. In order to make choice between the destination of Amazon RDS Oracle and Oracle running on EC2, we have to compare the features and options of both of these uh, destinations. Oracle Enterprise Edition and Standard Edition 2 are available in BYOL and license included option and they can be they are different for Amazon RDS Oracle and Oracle on EC2. In case of other features of the RDS Oracle and EC2, the main difference is the managed service and the self-managed. Managed service means it is automated operation through an API and makes it easier for the user to just uh, go through the menu and then press the switch to uh, on the screen to provision or to make changes to the environment. While self-managed means they have uh, the customer has to um, manage and maintain the application changes or any type of database changes that are happening in the environment. The database storage is limited to 64 terabytes at this time and for RDS Oracle and it can be hundreds of terabytes for the EC2 option uh, to run the Oracle database. As far as other options go, the most of them are managed under managed service such as automated backups, point in time recovery, high availability multi-AZ multi -AZ option as well as DR options for cross-region automated backups and read replicas. All of these can be implemented in Oracle on EC2 as well but that requires a lot of efforts and maintenance on part of customer. While in case of Amazon RDS Oracle, it is all automated through APIs. For monitoring, performance monitoring, there are multiple options available and Amazon RDS for Oracle makes it easier to do it through performance insight and managed service. The differences lie between the, uh, between the options or features of not having operating system access or access to the privileged accounts in case of Amazon RDS Oracle. This may make it difficult to install third party applications or um, third party uh, softwares on the Amazon RDS Oracle environment and that is why some customers choose to run it on Oracle on Amazon EC2. For database migration strategies, there are various strategies that are based on the downtime that can be afforded by the application 
when the cutover or the migration happens. Mm. The first one is the zero downtime migration. And for this type of migration, downtime is zero and active active database sites are required to, uh, to have this zero downtime when the cutover happens. Both sites on, from the on-prem and the one that is running in AWS infrastructure need to be active and fully uh, replicating the data from on-prem to Amazon uh, infrastructure. And then the databases need to have the data in sync without any conflicts. The application should be run on both sides at the same time by diverting some amount of traffic to the database that is running in AWS during the testing phase. That way, the testing and complex application configuration can take place and then, then it can be verified that the application can run smoothly on the new dat database that is going to run in AWS infrastructure. During the cutover, the application is running real time, meaning your end users st will still be using the application while it is cutting over from on-prem database over to the database running in AWS. After the cutover, the two databases still remain in sync meaning the replication continues from AWS database over to the on-prem database, giving option for the failback if that path is chosen to reverse the migration. In case of near zero downtime migration, the downtime is brief and it is in, for, in, in quantity of minutes or hours. In this case, there is a full data synchronization that happens until the point of cutover, which involves full load and the CDC. At the, at, during the cutover, the application reconfiguration and testing is completed and then the application is released to the end user. The cutover happens with a brief downtime and also during that time, reverse replication can be started to have a failback option to reverse the migration. In case of offline migration, the downtime can be in hours or sometime even in days. And in this case, the data transfer happens once the application is offline and once and then the complex application configuration can take place and the testing can take place. After all of these steps are done, then the cutover happens and the application then starts running in the new environment. This is mainly used in case of implementation when the application is drastically changing and going through a modernization or there are complex application configuration changes required for migration to complete. When you are migrating a database from on-prem to Amazon, it goes through two phases of migration. One is the full or initial load and then the CDC or change data capture. In case of full initial load, you have various options to migrate the database, such as Amazon Database Migration Service Full Load, Oracle Golden Gate, Oracle Data Pump, Oracle Data Guard, and Oracle Recovery Manager. The Oracle Data Guard and Recovery Manager options are only for the Oracle databases, target databases that are running on Amazon EC2 servers. While using any of these options, there are certain best practices that should be followed which would make the migration faster and reliable. First practice is to parallelly load the data from source to the target for maximum throughput. In this case, that source database can be split into multiple tables and schemas under multiple replication processes, either through a data migration service or any other option and load the data into the target database. To load the data as fast as possible, all the referential keys and the indexes on those keys need to be removed so that data can be bulk loaded at fastest rate possible. After the initial load is complete, then these indexes and constraints can be recreated to establish the data integrity. The transition from full load to the CDC is always has to be based on an SCN. SCN is the most accurate timestamp that one could get from the database to change the phase of migration from full load to the CDC. The changes that are happening in the source database during the database uh, uh, full load is running are stored into the transaction logs, which are archive logs in case of Oracle. So sufficient archive log destination space should be allocated so that all the archive logs can be retained until the full, full load 
is complete. The network bandwidth between the source and target database has to be maximized and for faster transfer of the data so that the database migration can quickly complete and then it could move into the CDC phase. Also, for the large volume of data, Amazon Snowball devices can be used to migrate the data. After the full, full load or initial load phase completes in database migration, the delta or change data capture phase starts. In this phase, the changes happening on the source database are read from the transaction logs, which are archive logs and redo logs in case of Oracle database, and then they are translated and applied to the target database to bring the both databases in sync. The options to do this CDC are Amazon Database Migration Service, Oracle Golden Gate, Oracle Data Guard, and Oracle Recovery Manager. The last two options are for the Oracle uh, target Oracle databases running on EC2 servers. The best practices to follow while using these options are to create the indexes and constraints before the CDC starts. These constraints that are dropped during the initial load phase to make run that phase faster are needed back in the, before the CDC starts so that the CDC can run faster as well as maintain the data integrity when the logical transactions are applied to the target database. The transactions coming from source can also be grouped together in the form of a batch and then the batch apply mode can be used to get the maximum throughput so that the changes are executed efficiently on the target database. Broader network bandwidth should be allocated for the CDC phase so that all the data that is flowing from source database to the target database moves as fast as possible and brings both databases in sync. Also sufficient resources should be give, um, allocated to the replication or hub instance which run as a middle instance between the source and the target database so that the uh, data transfer process runs as smoothly as possible and as efficiently as possible and brings both databases in synchronization and keep them synchronized until the cutover time. Migration strategies for cross platform migrations are different than the normal migrations in which cases uh, the database moves from one operating system to the same operating system in target. But when the operating systems are different, the migration is a cross-platform migration. In these cases, there are two methods to do this type of migration. One is logical migration and one is physical migration. In case of logical migration, the Amazon database service or Oracle Golden Gate can be used to migrate the database. The initial load and the CDC, the change data capture, can be performed using one of these tools. And in those cases, data is logically transferred to the target database and automatically it becomes compatible with the target platform. In case of physical migration, the Indianness of platform comes in picture. So please use the query that is shown on the screen on your database, on your source database, and it will show you what is the current Indianness of the current platform and what and the Indianness of the platform that you are trying to migrate to. And when they are matching, then that migration can be performed. For, the, for this type of migration, Oracle RMAN is to be used and then RMAN with transportable table spaces with conversion of data either on source or on target is to be used to, to migrate the database across the platforms. In case of data center migrations, you may have hundreds of databases to migrate and the consideration of strategy would be different. The first one is workload qualification framework, in which case you would analyze your Oracle workload and look at the RDS landscape, what are different database engines that it can support. And according to your goals, you may migrate some of the databases to the open source database, database engines and save on licensing cost. After sorting out the databases for each particular target, you can uh, then consider the consolidation of databases and schemas, which would reduce the number of databases to migrate and combine the schemas, as well as reduce the volume of the data to be migrated. Many times we find that there is a lot of old data in source databases 
that is not used by actually by the application. Such data can be archived and deleted from the source database, which reduces the data volume for the migration. Usually, when there are large number of databases and applications involved, we find that many applications and databases work together and need to be migrated together to the AWS infrastructure. Such phases need to be designed and accordingly, the migration plan needs to be created. Depending upon the data volume that needs to be migrated from on-prem to AWS, uh, AWS, Amazon Snowball devices can be used, which can actually physically copy the data onto a device and then ship it to Amazon to restore that data back into the Amazon infrastructure. Using these strategies, large number of databases can be quickly migrated from during the data center migrations when the landscape is consists of large number of Oracle databases. Now, let us look at Amazon database migration service for Oracle migration. It is very simple to set up. There is a replication instance that needs to be provisioned and then endpoints need to be established. These endpoints have the connectivity information to the source and the target database as well as settings to uh, decide the type of uh, replication process that needs to be used. Full load and CDC, both operations or can be performed using Amazon database migration service. It is cheaper to use and cost of the service is the cost of the replication instance that is being used and the outbound data transfer. The source for this service can be a Oracle single instance database or RAG database or multi-tenant database and the target can be an Amazon RDS Oracle or Oracle database running on EC2 server in Amazon infrastructure. When you are using Amazon database migration service to migrate databases from on-prem to Amazon, there are multiple phases of migration. There is a full load phase in which case the DMS runs several queries on the source database to fetch all the data from the source and insert it into the target. Same full load can be achieved using a bulk copy, using export import, are using other tools as well, such as Oracle Data Pump. The cache changes are the changes that are captured during the full load phase when the database is migrating from source to the target. The changes are automatically applied after the full load is complete, so the database are synchronized at the level of the bulk load. After that, the DMS process changes to the CDC phase, and in that case, it reads the transaction logs which are archive logs for the Oracle database and then writes those changes or executes those DML changes to the target database, eventually bringing both target and uh, uh, source database in synchronization for the final cutover. To summarize, today we looked at various Oracle database migration strategies to move or to migrate the database from on-prem to Amazon infrastructure. You can choose between the destinations of Amazon RDS Oracle or Oracle running on Amazon EC2 servers based on the features and options that they offer. The migration strategy is to be decided based upon the downtime and options or tools that are available to do the migration. Specific use cases involving cross-platform migration and migration of large number of databases during data center migration requires a special strategy to be considered. We also looked at how the database, Amazon database migration service works and how it can be used to do the migration. Thank you very much for your time today in watching this video. Below are some links to the RDS Oracle documentation and best practices as well as link to the AWS blogs that explain various features of RDS Oracle. We hope that this video will help you in determining your strategy in migrating on-prem Oracle databases over to Amazon RDS Oracle in Amazon infrastructure. Thank you.